Everybody, backyard bullion here. Welcome if you are watching this video on demand. We are going to have a little bit of a live hangout, chilling with some people here on wonderful YouTube, and we've got loads of nice pieces to have a look at here today. So I hope everybody is having a good week wherever they are. It's been a bit of a roller coaster with all of the silver prices going up and down, and I know a lot of people always get particularly anxious when that happens. So We'll wait for a few people to come into the chat and we'll see how we get on with the roller coaster that is silver this week. Got a few people coming in. Say hello when you join the chat. We are going to be on for about an hour here today. Uh, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. We'll see how it all goes. Tommy Styles first in to say hello. I hope you're well, my friend. Thank you for joining. Nine people in the chat now. Eleven. We didn't do a chat yesterday. We love us. Excuse me, swallowing some water there because we had uh, other things on in life, unfortunately. I'm trying to do more of these live streams as we go throughout the next uh, couple of months. I'm enjoying doing them on a weekly basis. This is like the sixth week in a row, I think, something like that. We've done a weekly hangout. Uh, I think it's quite cool, it's quite fun to uh, to chat with you guys, see you all, and you know, hear what the thoughts are on the metal markets right now. It's certainly been an interesting week. Uh, Silver Scorpion in the chat, HVAC Residential Basics, good morning, and Jonathan Middleton as well. Hello, how is everybody doing? Let's have a look at the live price of silver. So we're at £19.53, $27.74. Certainly a lot lower than it was earlier this week, and it's been a, an interesting couple of weeks, to say the least, watching the silver prices. It's kind of hit its maximum. A little bit it's not seen it's seeing to want to go up anymore after about three solid months of you know nice gains we are sitting at this point now where it's kind of make or break really uh, there's been a few interesting spikes but yeah we'll have to see where it all goes into the not too distant future uh, Tore Shanke is in as well hello how are you so we've only got eight people in the chat. It seems that the uh, YouTube notification system is working wonders for impromptu live streams. So, um, we'll just have to see how it all goes with new people coming in. Jonathan Middleton says it seems to have found a new level. I, I agree, uh, my friend Jonathan. I think that we have seen uh, this new level of uh, basically just where things are settling for gold and for silver. Um, I do think that there has been um, a paradigm shift in that um, sort of level basically and I do think we're not ever really going to see anything less than you know, 18 pounds an ounce for silver probably nothing less than about 1200 for gold so there's definitely some you know paradigm shifts happening I would 100% agree with you with that HVAC residential basics he got a bonus work today a bonus at work sorry what should I purchase well I suppose that depends a little bit HVAC on what size bonus it was um, I don't know. I mean, if it's a very, very big bonus, I'm always a fan of going big. Go big or go home, that's what I say. And we've got here certainly one of the biggest gold coins you can get out there at the moment on the market, the 50 pesos gold. Um, not for everybody, because it's not really that practical for UK investors if it's capital gains tax that you're worried about. But um, I love them. I absolutely love them. In fact, the video that's coming out today at five o'clock is me showing this in all of its glory and we'll be also doing tests on it to make sure that it is indeed genuine because when I got it I did look at it and think oh it's a very very shiny version I haven't seen one that looks this shiny before so uh, definitely one to test did all my tests and we'll have to see how that pans out in the uh, the later videos I think you could probably all guess though that it's actually a real gold coin but we'll showcase all of the tests that we did on it a little later today. That video is going to go live at five. Uh, Tommy Styles said, um, do you know that some of your stuff comes up in the secondary market? Uh, recently, I've seen a pyramid set you did come up about 12 ounces each. Yes, uh, Tommy, that's part and, part and parcel of making um, silver, making products, making things that people buy and then perhaps need to sell or want to sell. Um, it's natural, it's fine. I have seen numerous things go up for sale and it's an, it is an interesting one to sort of sit back and, and look and see what happens with those. Uh, I do follow, um, like for example, on eBay, I always have a little search notification for backyard bullion if anything comes up, it's always nice to see. 
and I have seen uh, a fair number of my pieces go for pretty high prices on the secondary market. I have also seen people uh, saying that they've put, picked up some of my stuff from uh, local coin stores and bullion dealers at um, really quite cheap prices. It's like choose the market to sell to get the best price is my uh, advice to anybody. And I don't make any bones of the fact that my poured silver products are not investment products. They are uh, poured collectible pieces. And if you just take them into any old bullion dealer, you know, I've got 33,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Yep, that's fantastic, and it's lovely to have 33,000 subscribers, but let me tell you, 33,000 subscribers is peanuts when it comes to the world, and quite frankly, nobody uh, you know, in Midwest America in a coin store will probably have heard of me. So it, it is you know, sad to see uh, when you hear some people say that they've had to sell some of the pieces that I've made, and they've only been given spot price or a little bit more. But it's, uh, you know, it's about choosing where and when to sell. For example, on the Silver Forum, every year uh, we see the one ounce Silver Forum bars go up for sale and they will always go for, um, you know, the previous years will always go a little bit above where the current price points are. So, it, you know, it's natural, Tommy, to see them. Um, if you can find a great deal, I mean, quid's in for you, if I'm being perfectly honest, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, HVAC Residential says it's not a golden bonus. So maybe it's a silver bonus. So we all need to, in the chat today, work out what is going to be best for HBAC Residential to buy with his work bonus that he's just got. See if we can get some good suggestions for any silver things that he can buy down in the, uh, in the comment section. Hopefully he can buy something without too many premiums. Uh, HVAC, it would be good to know where you're based if you're in the US or in the UK so that people can give you a good idea of the best things that you might want to consider buying. Paula Lawrence says that she's just ordered her first ounce of gold, purchased the Queen's Beast collector coin, uh, which I've, yeah, with the 10B. So, uh, so very excited to receive it. Also ordered the silver one ounce proof. Stunning coin, that Queen's Beast collector. Uh, I don't have it to hand. I've only got this as the Queen's Beast representing on the table, the white greyhound of Richmond. Uh, I love that completer coin, Paul, Paula, and I'm sure you will love it too once you get it in hand. It is absolutely stunning. It's probably my single favourite bullion, modern bullion coin that I've seen full stop. I think it is wonderful. Um, you know, not any kind of cheap bullion by any stretch. It came at 10, was it 9%, something like that, 10, 9%, depends where you buy it from, over spot price. But um, yeah, it was, it is a stunning coin and it should hold, if not grow, its premium over time as well, I have no doubt. Jonathan Middleton says that his BYB bars are in his keep box. First of everything goes there, bars, coins, and rounds. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And, you know, ultimately, I think that's what you've got to remember is that a lot of the things that I make and a lot of other people make as well, poured silver-wise, um, they are unique. They are different. They're not run-of-the-mill bullion products like the big Perth Mint pieces. And, you know, you can keep them for a long time. And theoretically, if, you know, we can get you good prices on retail at the other end and make you profit, that's job done for us and, and another tick in the box. But ultimately, you know, buy only from me and any other people, buy only if you can afford it, if you enjoy it, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support everything that we do. And uh, don't necessarily think you're going to make mega, mega bucks on buying mine or anybody else's poured silver. In fact, I've seen some uh, silver pourers doing live auctions where they end up selling their pieces for you know literally hundreds of dollars an ounce and it's like a little bit of hype a little bit of uh, excitement in the auctions and that's fine and great for those people but um yeah i mean that, that that's dubious in its own right but you know each to their own so buy what you like and buy what you will i think is another good example uh, of how you should think about all of these things uh jay uh, dubao says buy the silver music legends the who um, it's a difficult one to buy that one, uh, Jay. I, I am not in the know about all of the music series coins, and I have seen, of course, some really huge returns um, being publicised on those coins. Um, however, it, it, you know, there are issues with those, and I've got my three Graces coin coming back in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise as to what grade it got, but that's coming back very soon, and... Uh, the question is then about how and where and what we're going to get price-wise for it when we sell it. Loads of really interesting things. Um, yeah, it's going to be a definitely, definitely difficult uh, decision up ahead for that one. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Paula Lawrence, uh, you're in Michigan, USA, Grand Rapids. 
I have been to Milwaukee before, all the way back in the year 2000, long, long time ago. Lovely state, wonderful place. Um, we've got Tommy Styles, who says, just had a look at the 100 gram poured bar that was for sale back in 2021. Asking price was 100 pounds. Uh, is that one of our one, Tommy? Uh, we had, yes, we had our 100 gram poured bars uh, earlier this year, I think. Did we have any there? No, or is it last year we did them? I'm not sure we've done the 100 gram versions of our bars this year. I'd have to check my records. It's been a pretty hectic year so far. Um, and Tommy says he still wants that one kilo silver cube that you spoke to me on Instagram about. Well, we can certainly look to make that, of course, my friend, but um, it's no mean feat to make them. They are bloody difficult, bloody scary as well. Pouring a kilo of molten silver is not an easy thing. So if ever you are willing and wanting to do that, then let me know. We can definitely do it. I haven't got any of the kilo cubes to hand. Oh, but I do have a pair of kilo Rolos that um, we are looking to send on to, well, this one going to its new owner in due course when more products are ready for combined shipping. So that's already spoken for, but this is just an incredible piece. Absolutely lovely. You can see how big the kilo size is. It is properly chunky, properly good. And then this one here is my one to keep. My only piece of poured silver in my stack at the moment that I think I will never let go. I just love it. I have it on my desk uh, and often actually I'll have my uh, my pen stuck in there. It's like a pen holder. Bloody expensive pen holder, but absolutely love this thing. Really is like my favourite piece. Lovely, great big laser etched hallmarks on there as well. Um, so we're now up to 51 people watching. Thank you everybody for joining in on the live stream. We are just going to be having a bit of a hang out, talking and relaxing about silver. Uh, we're going to have a little chat about the silver prices because I know there's a lot of people out there who have been riding up and down on the roller coaster all week. And uh, every time that there are those roller coaster rides, we get people who um, start to get a little concerned. And I do want to talk a little bit about the, um, the sort of mental health side of things when it comes to investing in precious metals uh, and worrying and concern. And ultimately, my message to you is just to sit back, relax, enjoy that roller coaster. It's going to be up, it's going to be down and we're going to have a fun old time. Silver Scorpion uh, is in the chat. Hello, my friend. Shane Sturgis as well says, who on earth buys gold and silver to sell? He buys for his grandchildren, and I care not what the uh, what the pepper price is, presumably pre proper prices? Uh, regards, Shane, East Sussex. Well, thank you very much for sharing, Shane. Yes, there are loads of people out there who will buy stuff and will never look to sell it. And there are, to a certain extent, a lot of things in my collection that I probably won't sell for a very long time, if not uh, ever. But ultimately, I think it is important to recognise that you are putting money into these products, into these items, into these coins and bars and whatever it is. And let's face it, the world works on money. Well, revolves around on currency, on fiat. And if you do need it, you need to be prepared to sell it. That's the most important thing that I've always said to people. Be prepared to sell if you need to sell. That is the simple, most important thing. So whilst you might not plan to sell it, and that's absolutely fine to buy for future generations and preserve that wealth over time, just, yeah, be conscious that you might have to. Mark Piggott says, would love to know if the New Zealand mint Silver Winnie the Pooh and Friends is available anywhere. Would make a great birthday present for my girlfriend as she loves Eeyore. I haven't seen the New Zealand mint ones. I've seen the uh, Royal Mints um, Winnie the Pooh series. I've got a couple of them. I wasn't massively f enamoured by them, if I'm being brutally honest, and had a bad experience with the quality of some of them. Shock horror, quality from the Royal Mint not being up to scratch. Uh, well, that's a phrase, because one of them was deftly scratched. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I haven't heard of any, but if anyone else knows in the chat, then let us know. Uh, as we're, uh, what, what are we in? 54 uh, people watching. As we're carrying on with this, do remember just to hit that thumbs up button. Go on, hit it, hit it now. Let's see if we can get up to 30 thumbs up in the next couple of minutes. I always forget to do it when I'm watching other people's live streams, so it's always helpful for the channels to get those likes Get those interactions going. That's one of the most important things that anybody can do for uh, helping channels. You know, just watch, just enjoy, just comment, hit that like button. It helps everything that we do. Uh, oh, Shane, you mean paper price, not pepper price. Because the price of pepper, I'm sure, is considerably less than the price of silver. 
Um, but yeah, you know, help people, uh, you know, help people on YouTube, hit the thumbs ups, leave a comment, even if it's just liked the video, or, you know, it really helps everybody uh, on YouTube as best as people can, so. Spanish Silver in the chat, one of our moderators, thank you my friend, how are you doing? Uh, I've seen you've had some really nice pickups recently of some of those Raw Mint releases. Kudos to you, to you my friend, for those. Uh, Connor Montgomery uh, says that he loves a Queen's Beast coins. Well, so do I, Connor. I have to say it is probably... The Queen's Beast series is by far and away my favourite series. In fact, I've got a few of the two-ounce silvers lying around. And these ones are ones which I picked up just as bullion waiters because they were, um, they were just too good to pass up. So I'm going to handle them with my bare hands. You can see them, feel them, enjoy them. I'm not worried about the quality or the uh, or anything about them. They're just beautiful, absolutely lovely stuff. So here they are. We've got uh, what well, we got three horses and a greyhound. Very very nice pieces. I mean they're just wonderful. The two ounce sizes are fantastic. And one of the things that I always have said about silver and gold is if you ever get a bunch of silver and gold and you just want to enjoy. Um, you know, what they feel like, get one of them out, just enjoy it, you know, ultimately don't necessarily do it for really expensive proof coins, but for bullion grade coins like these, you know, a lot of these were, uh, certainly for me, I bought these way back when uh, it was pre-Brexit, when the market was a lot, lot less for premiums. Uh, I think I paid around about 17 or 18 pounds an ounce for these from memory. Um, so, you know, from just pure bullion weight, they're always going to uh, hold value, especially now with the secondary market premiums. Um, so I'm not bothered about you know, the clinking and clanking and fingerprints and milk spots and all of that. I can enjoy them for what they are, big chunky monkey coins. They are absolutely wonderful. So uh, let's sit them down here for now. Absolutely love the Queen's Beast series. Um, do, 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 do. So that was Connors. We've got Ham, Ham Mo saying word up. Hello, my friend. Uh, AY says pepper is worth more than fiat. I think most things are worth more than fiat at the moment. Daniel Johnson says, started stacking during the first lockdown thanks to you, BYB. Finally managed to get some substantial savings locked away. Always spend it when it's sat in a savings account. Daniel, you're welcome. I'm glad that we have introduced you to the world of metals. And it's a common story, I think, throughout this last year. And in fact, now, in this world that we're in, there are... It's not just metals. I've noticed... I follow a lot of other types of genres here on YouTube, um, and I've seen a bunch of different collectible um, channels absolutely blow up. Things like Magic the Gathering. I'm a big fan of Magic the Gathering. I played it hugely, hugely when I was younger. Um, I don't really have the time or volitional money to spend on it now as a as a playing hobby, but there are a lot of people who invest in it. And I've been reading and watching a load of different people talking about the investing in collectibles like this. and. I get it. Like, you know, I used to always remember uh, reading about people who would buy Star Wars memorabilia and I'd be like, mm, yeah, yeah. And then you, you, you'd have to have the, the mint edition in original mint packaging really to have any kind of chance it has to be from the 70s. But real, really, right now, there is this huge, huge, like, boon for things that, you know, just things, the things that are not money. Uh, whether it be old books of, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. I was a huge Dungeons and Dragons player and fan back in my youth and I've got a bunch of these older edition books all used like all used to within an inch of their life some of them um, from all the games I used to play um, but they are valuable now you know we're talking even used editions going for you know three or four times what a brand new version of the latest edition would go for and it's quite amazing really to see um, but people definitely are enjoying collectibles right now so it's just things right now that are going up in value and that's because People just want out of money. It's just useless sitting in the bank account. Uh, Nikki Garilov uh, said, hey, I'm thinking gold and silver are going to drop soon. What is your opinion? Um, yeah, Nikki, it's an interesting one. I've been thinking for a while, actually, that I think gold and silver will see some slow decline over time. Um, there's a few things that I'm concerned about for that. Uh, first of all, it's going to be around the question of inflation. Now, a lot of people think that inflation will automatically mean that silver and gold will go up because the value of currency is devaluing. Um, yes, that is definitely a factor, but one of the biggest economic tools that any government or any 
body or institution has is to raise interest rates to combat inflation. So inflation is all about spending. It's all about how many people are spending and how much they're paying for things. And if the price of borrowing is incredibly low, like it is right now with pretty much 0% interest rates, people are more likely to take out a loan to go and build a conservatory or an extension on their house or upgrade their garden. Or developers are more likely to go to the banks and take huge loans to create housing developments and things like that. If you take that interest rate up, it will mean people are less likely and less inclined to actually spend money. So there'll be fewer people spending and the price of things go down because there's more things on the market with fewer buyers. Therefore, inflation rates go down, the currency stabilizes. Now, the converse argument to that is with the sheer amount of debt that is out there at the moment from every country around the world, printing money, money printers go brr, my favorite phrase of all, um, you know, you see that, yeah, perhaps they won't be able to finance that debt. But let's be quite honest, the amount of zeros that are on the end of some of these debt figures, by increasing inflation, uh, sorry, interest rates just by a few percent, it will make very little difference overall. They'll just add extra numbers to the debt ceiling, they'll add extra numbers to debt. Uh, you know, it, it is not going to make a difference and it is going to be better than having a currency hyperinflated way to zero. So when people... You know, when I say this on my channel, and I've said it a number of times in recent videos, that interest rates will go up. They will not stay at zero. They will not stay at 0.1% or whatever they are. They will go up. People always go, no, 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 they can't possibly go up. Con countries won't afford the debt. It will cripple them. That's not true. It will not happen. And, you know, when interest rates go up, we're going to see a big decline in gold and silver for sure. That is what I think. I mean, I could be wrong. I really could be wrong. Uh, 75 of you in the chat now. Hello. And we've still got only 30 likes. So another reminder to ha hit that like button. Let's see if we can get up to 50 likes. It would be wonderful to hit 50 uh, on there. Now, if you've got any questions for me in the chat, because what I am best known for is going off on ridiculous rambles. And I have just gone off on a big ramble. So I uh, have missed where I was in the chat. I think it was Nikki Gar Garilov saying about... Uh, Golden Silver are going to drop soon. So if you want to ask a question and you want to grab my attention, two main ways to do that. One with a super chat, which helps support the channel as well. Or you can use the at symbol and go at Backyard Bullion. That then highlights my name and it highlights it in the chat feed so I can see it. And I'll answer your questions and I'll go to those and prioritize them. Otherwise, we're going to go back up the chat a little bit and say, and we've got you, why you, says that they missed the dip yesterday and wanted to get a greyhound. So... Buying dips is a really interesting one. This is my next tangent. Buying dips. Um, right now, there is a little bit of a dip, although, actually, let's just check the live silver price. So live silver price is currently at £19.56 per ounce. Is that right? Let me just refresh the page. No, £19.60 per ounce and $27.81 per ounce. So it's crept up a little bit since we started the stream. It is very difficult to um, buy in dips and to maximize those dips. And to be quite frank, if you're buying a bit of gold for a long-term investment, trying to time a particular dip is very difficult, it's very hard, and ultimately it doesn't make a great deal of difference unless there is a monumental crash or gain in the market over the course of a couple of hours or days. You're really not going to save a great deal, and at the other end, it won't make a big difference. So I've always been a fan of if you've decided to buy that gold, if you're going to go buy that gold, make that decision, pull that trigger, don't look back, move on, and just enjoy what you've got. So that is my advice for anybody who feels perhaps that they've missed the dip a little bit. We've got a few people with the highlighting of my name for comments. Thank you. I can now see that really easily. Uh, Daz, uh, Dazlina? Gosh, you guys have difficult to pronounce um, names for sure. Dazlina uh, says, do I think uh, a gold confiscation is possible in the UK? It's happened before. It's happened in the past. We have had gold confiscations or gold, um, what's the word, like gold restrictions on how much gold people can own. So it is possible. I think it would be very unlikely to happen again uh, in this modern world that we live in. Uh, I think the, the issue now is because the country is completely off the gold standard uh, and money and finances are completely disconnected with that, combined with the fact that there's been such a long period of gold ownership and buying for people that it would be a bloody logistical nightmare to do. 
I don't think it is likely. I think more likely there will be additional taxes on gold. I think there will be taxes on purchasing gold that could be introduced, VAT, for example. And I think there could indeed potentially be taxes on the ownership of gold as well. Uh, and let me tell you, if you've been buying lots of gold from bullion dealers, uh, if you've been buying more than £5,000 worth in one go or £10,000 worth across an annual period, then there's a very good chance that those dealers will have your identification details, your address details obviously as well, uh, and at the push of a button they will have to send all that data to HMRC. So there is absolutely no way that you could avoid that if it happens. If it does happen, it's probably going to happen because of a severe devaluation of the pounds. There we go, just polish that. Look at that beautiful coin. And because of the complete de uh, devaluation of the pound and at that point you'll want to get your gold out uh, and put into something that you can actually use in a real world if you're uh, money has completely disappeared to nothing. Uh, right, now I'm falling way behind on the chat. We're getting more and more people in, 84 of you in the chat now. Um, let's just go, and so I'm basically going to try and focus on the highlighted questions first. Um, if you want to ask questions, if you've got comments that you want me to respond to or anything, put it in the highlights, so go at Backyard Bullion, or if you want to be super cool, you can do a super chat and that will get first priority. Um, so next down we have Old Boy Network saying, Backyard Bullion, did you ever read Downfall of Money, Germany, Germany's Hyperinflation by Frederick Taylor? I did not read the book, my friend, but I did a uh, uh, significant amount of work on that in my history at A-level. Um, really enjoyed, I say really enjoyed that period of history. It's a disastrous, horrible period of history, but from a historical, economical standpoint, it's a fascinating period of history. So I do know a lot about that era and it is... Um, yeah, it's quite scary, really. Rockzilla channel member in the chat. Uh, he's got his bar. He's got his package. We packaged it up live for him last week. Bloody hell, Rockzilla. That's gone really quickly over to you guys in the USA. That is a kudos to the post office and the US Postal Service. Goodness me. Chris Kelly says, any pointers on home storage or safes for bullion? Chris, if you're still in the chat, great question. Um, my top tip, my biggest top tip for getting a safe is to try and find a safe that does not have any YouTube videos showing how to open it within 30 seconds. That is most certainly my top tip for any uh, budding silver stacker or gold stacker to have a safe which is not commonly known on YouTube to be easily opened. Um, because the last thing you want is somebody to break into your house over a long weekend and find your safe and go, oh, well, okay, let me just have a quick look online. And then they look online and then they go, oh, I can do that. And they do it and they open your safe and bye-bye. Um, so that's my first piece of advice. The second is to don't scrimp on price either. If you're going to get a safe, go, go, you know, properly and get a good, get really good quality one, um, you know, pays for itself ultimately, you know, ultimately what you want with it. Otherwise, if it is just a shoddy little, you know, useless one that is going to be opened very easily or you know, not bolted to the floor, for example, or not a giant one, then what's the point? You know, it's just going to be um, next to useless for what it is supposed to do. So that's my uh, my thoughts on safes. Uh, going down, we've got, ah, Casper says, Backyard Bullion, I was just wondering what you're going, when you're going to send out those lovely silver one-ounce bars, just waiting for yours. Thank you, Casper. Uh, yes, we are going to be dispatching the next round on Monday. Uh, we've got something like 68 parcels currently lined up, ready to be packaged over this weekend, and then they're going to go in the post on Monday. So hopefully you should be able to get it next week, and I appreciate your patience. Uh, Silver Bull says, hello, everybody in the chat. Hello, my friend. We are now up to 93 people, by the way, in the chat. Smack a like if you're enjoying hanging out, chatting with us here. Uh, Chica Loca GB says, back your bullion, do you know whether there will be a 2021 Britannia with an oriental border? I haven't seen one. From my memory, um, Chica Loca, I believe that they were only a three issue series ending in 2020. So I think the answer is no, but I am not the ultimate, um, you know, authority on this. So we'll have to see. Jay says, back your bullion, has the pandemic affected your business more or less than Brexit complications have? My eBay, sale, my eBay sales have skyrocketed. Jay, yes, uh, I mean, pandemic has affected in a positive way for sure. I mean, the amount of uh, additional buyers for metals out there is ridiculous. And as with everything that I've always said on, on our channel, if you ever get a massive increase in spot price and premium growth as well, you get people who are more interested in buying high quality premium items rather than bullion grade pieces of silver. So for us, we were inundated right at the very start. 
I remember right at the very start when everything started to lock down, uh, I had um, I had a bunch of stuff. I had like 30 different items on my website, and that's how I used to work. I used to pour a, a you know, bunch of stuff and just have it listed on the website. Some would take a little time to sell. Some would sell relatively quickly. But in the space of that one week where lockdowns were started to uh, come into force, everything sold. And I remember pretty much, I think it was like the Wednesday of that week was the busiest, where we had something like 18 different individual sales. Um, it was just mad. It was absolutely like, you know, I had like the ching, cha ching noise on my phone for PayPal. Um, and I had to turn it off because it was just kept on going. It was it was mad. So, yeah. And then since then, we've just been ridiculously busy with commission orders. I've hardly had any time. That's why we don't have anything on our website, Jay, because we just work to order all the time uh, and people just get in touch. And, you know, it, it is mad, absolutely mad. So, um, yeah. Now, I have neglected the chat for a long time. So I'm just going to scan down. If you guys have questions and you want me to answer them, um, couple of ways you can do that. Use the at symbol in Backyard Bully and that'll get my attention. Or if you want to support the channel, you can do a super chat and ask anything that you want to do. AY says, do gold sovereigns make up a significant portion of your stack? What do you think of them for stacking as a Brit? Um, they are wonderful, my friend. I absolutely love sovereigns just for uh, the history, for the way they look, the way they feel, the price. They are fractional at a really low premium as well. Uh, in fact, we can see some of, look at these, some of the prices paid for these uh, over the course of, in fact, look at that, all three of these were from eBay. That was back in the day when eBay used to give you um, like random uh, vouchers to spend, um, you know, 10% off vouchers or something, and you could use it on gold, you could use it on the coin section. They stopped that after a little while, but these at the time, uh, worked out less than spot price for gold, you know, and uh, I, it was literally at one per account. So I remember I got one, Mrs. Backyard Bullion got one, and my dad got one of these vouchers. So I was like, right, you're all buying gold with it. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I, I love sovereigns. I think they are fantastic. Uh, how much do they form of my stack? Um, they don't form the vast majority of my stack by any stretch. Uh, I'm very much more a fan of the one ounce gold size for, uh, for many reasons. One, my general idea and plan is that when we get to the uh, back end of our stacking days, stacking adventures in my retirement area, I think about an ounce of gold per month is a really good top up to any pension. Um, so to have an ounce of gold that you can then look to release, to um, live off, you know, supplement your pensions, that for me is where I want to go with that. And you can see, look at that, some of the lovely prices paid for this one all the way back in 2017, 1,008 pounds an ounce. Whoa, those were the days, and that would have been when spot price was about 950 as well. So significant gains on that. Um, Silky says, are coins or bullion easier to sell during a recession or a depression? Um, to a certain extent, yes, and to a certain extent, no. Yes, because there are always going to be, um, like we buy any gold shops and dealers will always be in demand because they will be able to make a lot of money on people who are in dire need, they need to release money. So yes, for that point of view, but no on the second hand market, because there'll of course be fewer people with the buying power and money to do it. I guess that's how it would work. Um, so just going down the chat a little bit more, we've got Connor Monnery admiring the 50 pesos gold coin. By the way, if anyone wants to see anything in particular that's laid out on the table here, just let me know and we'll put it up close to the camera. Um, Michael W says he's got a several of the 50 pesos, but none of them are in that good a condition. I mean, it's so funny you say that, um, Michael. This was sold by um, Shards, bullions, a bullion and coin, and there is a video going at five o'clock today where we are going to do some testing on this, some weight, dimension, a specific gravity test as well. And they describe this as below bullion grade. That doesn't mean that the content of the gold is anything less than stated, but it means that the condition was meant to be atrocious. But look at it. It's gorgeous. It's not an atrocious coin by any stretch. Absolutely beautiful. So very, very feeling like I got a good deal for that. 103 of you in the chat now. Let's see if we can get up to 75 likes there must be at least 20 of you out there who are watching who are currently not hitting that thumbs up button. So do hit the thumbs up button for me to help. It's a really good way of helping people, by the way. If you watch people's YouTube channels, if you watch my videos, other people's videos, just hit the thumbs up button. Try and remember, get in the habit of doing it because it really helps channels. Uh, like the YouTube algorithm is a slave to engagement. So thumbs up, little comment here and there on people's videos really goes a long way to help them. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the best ways that you can support any channels out there. And Tommy Styles is rightly saying over 100 people in the chat. Yep, 100 people. Let's get 
Let's go. Let's see if we can get more than 100. 104. Let's see if we can get up to 100 likes by the end of the stream. That would be great. Silver Stacks Prepices, great channel. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate your feedback there. That's very kind. Uh, Jay, following on from the question about busyness in the post-pandemic world, uh, it is a good problem to have to be so busy. And I'm very, very grateful to be as busy as I have been over this last year, for sure, uh, Jay. And I, and I know a load of other people who um, started selling things as hobbies um, or even started pouring silver as hobbies have found the exact same joy that's come from uh, the hobbies that we do that are now turning into ways of life for people. And, you know, for those who don't know, I, this is my job. I do this now as a living. I pour silver for a living. I make YouTube content. Uh, you know, it's all all adds up, all little bits here and there. I sell a few coins here and there. I invest uh, in the various different releases that come out from Royal Mint. That all adds into my annual um, earnings, self-employed, pay the taxes and everything. So it's you know, it's a difficult life and, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's it's stupid to give up job to do that. But I have flexibility. I have enjoyment. I absolutely love what I do. And I would say to anybody that if you sat at your computer at your desk at work and you just hate what you do like I used to, absolutely hate what you do, then it's time for a change. And you'll be amazed that suddenly, like, for example, this weekend, I have nearly 70, probably 75 boxes of packages for people to wrap up and sort and do and I think if somebody had said to me 10 years ago that I'd have spent most of my Saturday or Sunday or both packaging up people's items packaging up orders uh, and basically just doing a packaging job I'd have been really like you know and I don't mean to be rude to people who do packaging jobs for a living um, but it is menial it is it is sort of menial labor basically and for me, it's not because I enjoy it. I love it. I've got passion for this. Whoa, nearly dropped that. Um, I've got passion for what I do and that's it doesn't feel like a job. And for anybody out there who, who can sympathize with that, let me know in the chat because it is the most incredible, incredible feeling. So uh, anyway, I've, I've gone on another tangent again. I'm very sorry. Uh, Harry T says, and by the way, these people that I'm answering questions to are using the app symbol and then going backyard bullying. So it highlights my name and I can see so much easier in the chat when it comes up. So Harry T says, at Backyard Bullion, is it a good time to start stacking as a long-term investment, especially as a young person, 17 years old? And what would you recommend being the best way to do so? Well, Harry, it's a fantastic question, and it's one which uh, I think I have to give a little bit of air of caution when answering because I am not a qualified financial advisor, but I would encourage any young person, to be honest, I'd encourage anybody right now to start excuse me, to start saving and to start saving responsibly and to try and keep out of debt. Don't go and get car finance. Buy a second-hand car. Buy an old banger and keep out of debt. If you're going to get a brand new phone, don't buy it on finance. Don't buy it on a humongous 24-month contract that you'll end up paying three times what the value of the phone is. Go and buy two years ago's model and you'll buy it for a quarter of the price that it came out at, and you'll have still a really nice looking phone. A lot of the time, a lot of them are brand new anyway. And um, it's, you know, just things like that, small things to keep you out of debt. And if you can save money over time, that is even better. And of course, saving cash over time is a bit more questionable, but young people will need cash to, like I say, buy a car or buy whatever they need to, buy a new suit for work or buy, you know, pay their rent, for example. You're probably not going to be getting on the housing ladder anytime soon. So making sure that you've got enough, um, basically just enough money to keep you going. And then you can save and save and save. And hopefully at some point you can get on the property ladder and then you're golden. If you can keep debt free from a young age going forward, then your quid's in for life. Rockzilla says he likes the look of the fractional silver rounds that we have on the table. Um, so, Rockzilla, I know that you've um, you mentioned on Instagram that you like them. I saw that you uh, you saw my post. So, for those who are not in the know, it's hard to pick them all up at once. We have been making something a little bit different. These are little fractional pieces. I call them my backyard bullion uh, apocalypse barter tokens, and uh, basically they are little tiny pieces of silver casting grain that I use for my poured silver and I've managed to find certain ones which weigh a certain amount and some of them weigh a little bit more and I trim them down to a particular weight threshold and then we hammer them flat 
and then stamp their weight, obviously, as you can see, 909 fine silver, and the little leaf symbol. They're really, really cool, but let me tell you, they take an absolute bloody age to make, and also, you probably can't see greatly, but on my finger here, I've got the remnants of a rather nasty blister that I had, which, um, yeah, was formed by the pliers that I used to trim all of these. So, absolute pig to, uh, to get. But, Roxilla, if you are interested, um, I can't get that last one off my finger. The three packages that we've got here, these are all one ounce packages. Those have been reserved by uh, other channel members already, but you're in luck because we've got other packages here of 10 grams. We've got 10 grams, we've got 15 grams, 15 grams, we've got a 20 gram batch, another 10 gram batch, and another 20 gram batch. So we've got all of those batches and they can mix and match. We're gonna be doing different price points. So Roxilla, if you are interested in them, in them, then drop me an email. You've got all the details, mate. And we can look to hook you up with something. And if anybody else is interested in them, we will be probably listing them on the Silver Forum first next week. Um, but as I've always done, you know, any YouTube channel people or any channel members or anybody just watching, if you want to email me, we can look to sort it out. The way that we're going to do pricing wise, because it took so bloody long to make them, um, we're pricing it at an ounce is £65. Uh, and then if you just want to buy a smaller batch, it will be a little bit more on a price per gram basis. But for example, if you wanted to get one of the 20 gram bags and a 10 gram bag, and we've actually got a couple of spare little one grammers, so we could make up another one ounce one. It just doesn't have some of the larger denominations like in this one here. I think we've got, a, yeah, we've got a three grammer, which is the biggest. These other ones don't have a three grammer, uh, but you could get an ounce Roxilla easily, or if anybody else wants to mix and match to get them. So just let me know. Uh, but they're really cool, and I like the idea of fractional stuff, but uh, bloody hell, they were so difficult to make, and um, yeah, they were just, whoa, absolute pig, but I, I enjoyed making them. We've got more shot that we can do to make them, so we'll see how they go and see how popular they are. Um, so, da -da -da -da. Saint Duck says, all my gold is maple leaves. Are maple leaves, or are maple leaves, or whatever. Uh, maple leaf gold is great. I like a maple leaf. I've only got one. It's a really old, tatty um, maple leaf from Shard's Bullion Coin. In fact, that's where I got this rather tasty looking grade C bullion 50 pesos. And that's what I was expecting. I was expecting it to look like that grimy, dirty, scratched up maple that I've got from them. Uh, by the way, I bought it knowing it was like that. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's difficult to, um, yeah, to see what uh, is going on with that. Um, I see that Spanish Silver's been doing a little bit of moderation in the chat here. I mean, there's people just talking about um, cryptos and things. We don't really generally like that. I mean, I, just cryptos are cryptos. Keep it to crypto channels. Um, we mean nothing by Old Boy Network for having crypto stuff go away, but um, it's just not. I just hate it. I hate cryptos, and there's so many scammers out there. And we're not saying you're a scammer, but just we keep it off this channel. Um, so yeah, basically cryptos, no, that's Saint Duck, that's the reason why Spanish Silver's getting them. So thank you Spanish for doing a little bit of uh, moderation. Jay says, have I featured the Queen's Beast completer coin yet? What do I think of it? It looks wonderfully busy, but, ma uh, but that may mean two ounce is needed to truly appreciate it. Uh, I absolutely love that coin. I have featured it a few times, Jay. Uh, if you just look back through some of the videos, you'll see that we did a couple of In Focus Fridays on it and the proof versions. We've got the gold proof, the silver proof, absolutely incredible coin and it is one of my favorites of all times for sure and it's certainly one for the long-term stack i think it's um a beautiful beautiful piece um owen may says uh well he's just replying spanish silver that's fine stephen w says no attention should be paid whatsoever to that number put out by the comex hsbc jpm or whoever i could have told you that the price of silver would be less than 28 an ounce just by looking at the options well we're going to check in now on the live silver price. Let's have a look. So we've got £19.60 still and $27.81. So pretty much the same as it's been over the last hour or so. Um, I mean, look, I put a video out. In fact, it's one of the most popular videos I put out recently last, what was it, last week. Um, I'm not a fan. I am not a fan of this anti-banker rhetoric as this us versus them. You know, ultimately, yes, I don't like Wall Street massive manipulation and all of that but to have this visceral nasty rhetoric out there is just in, in my opinion a bit a bit hostile and a bit not what I like and it's not I don't like I don't want to be the member of the group that's running down Wall Street with a pitchfork 
and a torch in my hand. So, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see who else is in the chat. So we've got AY saying, I wonder if there are any ways that you can improve. In and so that is probably why they did it. I would imagine as well that it just looked all dirty with fingerprints and stuff like that. I gave it a good clean when I got it as well. So um, in terms of the other little pieces, like the main, the main problem is actually finding them in the right weight category and then trimming it down such that they would... Uh, be the right weight. So a lot of the time you'll find that you know they're not exactly one gram or 1.5 grams, a little bit, a little bit over. And um, actually trimming them down with a little pair of pliers is the most difficult and time-consuming bit. The hammering is fine, although I've got a little batch. Have I got this over here? No, that's my good batch. Oh, I think I've uh, put them all back in a box somewhere, unfortunately. But I've got a batch of about 20 of them, which are all like misstamped. Because the problem is when you stamp on one side uh, and then you flip it over, so here's the three grammar, you, you do this side first, three grams, 999 silver, you flip it over and you put the leaf mark on it. And because you're stamping against hard steel, uh, it actually then flattens this side again and often distorts the stamps that you've already put in. So I had to go over them and it's quite difficult to do. So lots of efficiency things to learn for sure. And I'm sure I could do it much more efficiently, but... Um, pretty difficult to do in its uh, entirety just for me sat at home uh, working off this kitchen table you know that's that's pretty much all I've got to uh, to add to it um, let's see I don't know if you guys can hear in the background there's a bloody great big fly buzzing against the window uh, sorry if you can hear this buzzing in the background it's really annoying me uh, Dubri UK says I have contacts in the trade and I'm looking to purchase quite a lot of bullion and coins over the next few months is there anything hot and upcoming for 2021? Any attractive coins? I don't know about upcoming stuff, my friend, um, that is potentially out there. There's always new coins that are being produced or being worked on by places like the Royal Mint and, and such. But uh, as to finding out exactly what is coming up that will be hot, that will be a good pick, very difficult to actually work out and know, I'm afraid. Uh, I'd say if you have got the volition to go and get some of the Queen's Beast Completed coins, Excuse me. Although I think that a lot of those are in actually uh, quite high premium right now, certainly more than they were when they were originally released. Uh, Cash and Coins is in the chat. Says hello, hello. How are you, Cash and Coins? Hope you are well. We are over a hundred in the chat still, so um, do hit that thumbs up button. Let's see if we can get to a hundred likes by the end of this stream. That would be absolutely wonderful. A hundred likes would be fantastic. That's uh, a nice little target to get to. Uh, I always forget to do it myself when I'm in other people's live streams. When they remind me, it's always a good way to do that and to actually hit that thumbs up button. Um, Jay says, no noisy fly audio here. Good. I'm glad you can't hear it, Jay, because it's bloody annoying where I am. But anyway, um, Moose says, so what are the, some of the signs historically of a time to sell precious metals? If there, is, if there is even such a thing, what are good indications of when to think about cashing out e.g. interest rates or inflation. Well, I suppose part of the problem, Moose, is about what your goals are for buying precious metals in the first place. A lot of people will hold on to their metals for decades, and that's the plan that I have for the vast majority of things like my gold, for example. I will keep this stuff way into my uh, later years, my retirement, and as I said earlier in the stream, I'm much more of a fan of having the kind of one ounce gold size so that when I do get to that retirement age, roughly one ounce of gold a month, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depends on what we want to do, that is a great way to be able to top up any pension income that we have. And the idea then is to be able to retire earlier than I would have been able to do otherwise. So. In terms of when to sell if you're in the short-term gain, that's always even more difficult because you don't know about, you know, what's going to come around the corner. We've got, of course, worries about inflation right now, which could mean that things are going to go up slowly over time. But because there is inflation, there is a good chance that there will be economic measures brought in to combat that inflation, like the increase of interest rates. So, you know, that will then push gold prices down, push silver prices down. We've seen gold drop back down quite considerably over this last couple of days. It got to some really great big highs in its recent months, and then the support for it dropped out the bottom, and it dropped within, you know, a day, it dropped 25, 30 pounds worth per ounce, which is, yeah, not easy to factor in. So it's very difficult, I guess, is the answer, Moose, and it depends why you're stacking. So perhaps you could tell us your motivations for stacking in the, in the chat, and we can go into it a bit more depth. 
Um, Owen May says uh, that he, he says, me neither, want it replaced with another financial system that does not have the current ones, very negative qualities though. Uh, whatever will come at the other end of any potential collapses is unknown and nobody can really say. Uh, Mini, well, sorry, Mike B, I'm sorry, Mini B. Mike B says, hey, BYB, do them cool mini silver coins you make have to be hallmarked by the assay office. In fact, I've seen also Roxilla says right underneath it whether these are going to be assayed as well. So let me just grab, grab one of my little assay information cards and one of the important things here is you can see up here it says in the uk it is illegal to sell or describe any item as gold silver platinum or palladium unless it is hallmarked and there's a little star next to that and that refers to the exemption weights there are by the way also exemptions for coins so governmented coins and the like do not need to be uh, hallmarked the exemption weights there you can see silver platinum palladium gold and those are the exemption weights there. So anything that is 7.78 grams or less worth of silver does not require hallmarking. So of course, these little pieces here uh, do not need hallmarking. There's also a secondary problem to these, uh, both Roxilla and, um, I've forgotten who was it, it was Mike. Both of you, uh, the answer to this is, there is very limited space as to where a hallmark could go. And if you and um, think about the logistics of putting a hallmark on each and every tiny little piece as well at roughly £1.50 per piece in volume. Um, of course, you can suddenly see that the £2 a gram that we're charging turns into £3.50 or even more, £4 a gram, and that is when it starts to get a little bit ridiculous. Um, you know, I'm, I think £2 a gram for what we're selling these for is a pretty good price for a fractional tiny piece of silver that we've made. It took a long time to make them. It's also not something that's exorbitantly expensive. I've had a few people say that they would be prepared to or would easily pay three, four, five pounds a gram for them. And I just said, no, I'm not even going to try that. One person, when they inquired about one of our ounce categories, he said he'd pay me a hundred pounds for it. I said, no, that's, that's ridiculous. It's 65 pounds for the ounce. That is all we're going to do. Um, so yeah, that's the answer to that. No assay required. Um, Let's see, Nick too said, when the next great engraver is out, what design will, what design, I can't even read, I'm gonna start again. When the next great engraver's out, what will the design be? Is there enough silver to make the bars as raw mint are low in stock of silver bars? So there's two questions in there, Nick, which, will I, which I will address straight away. The first one is about the next great engraver's coin and the design, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but I have a suspicion that it's certainly one of the next ones will be the Gothic crown which is an absolutely iconic, iconic coin design, and it is an incredible one. So that is most likely going to be the next design, but I could be wrong. Your next question about whether or not they will have enough silver, um, 100% they will have enough silver. They are not making their generic bars right now because they want to focus on making other products which make them more money. Also, this notion that there is a shortage of silver out there in the world at the moment, uh, for want of a better phrase, is a load of bollocks. There is plenty of silver out there, and I'm sorry if that's YouTube unmonetization friendly, but you know, when I see loads of different channels and you know, even the US Mint, when they came out and said that there's a global you know, shortage of silver, they did not mean that. They actually clarified that because people just jumped on this bandwagon to go, oh my God, there's a shortage of silver. There's no silver in the world. What are we going to do? There is plenty of silver in the world, 100 100% there is plenty of silver in the world. It's just the supply chains. It is just the fact that the mines out there are not operating at full efficiency and they can't or won't because of all of the COVID restrictions and the supply chains are also being difficult. And the biggest problem is for mints right now is that the refineries that is uh, that are making these blanks or making the uh, bits of silver to send, you know, the big bars to send, they are working out very quickly that they could flog them to the raw mint or the US mint for spot price or they could privately retail them to other institutions or other private mints that don't have the buying power of those institutions, and they will quite simply sell them at their own volition for an enhanced profit. And if a refinery used to sell a million ounces to the US mint for spot price, and they can suddenly sell the same million ounces to a private mint or private individuals for three or four dollars per ounce, they are making three or four million dollars more than they were at the other end. So. Quite honestly, no silver shortage out there, but what there is is a bunch of greedy, greedy people who want as much money as they possibly can from the resources that they have available to them. 
Another example, I know I'm only small fry, but this is kind of part of the argument. I rang up a, a, a bullion dealer the other week and I, um, I basically just said, do you know what? How much gold and silver, sorry, how much silver, I didn't ask about gold, how much silver shot could I buy if I needed it? And they said, pretty much as much as you want. So I said, well, you know, 100 kilos, could I get 100 kilos? By the way, I'm not going to go out and buy 100 kilos worth of silver shot right now. I was just doing this as a thought experiment and they were you know, basically, yeah, three week wait, we'll get you 100 kilos. So, you know, 100 kilos there is um, maths I can't even quickly do. Uh, what is it? 32 ounces per kilo. That's 3,200 kilos worth of silver. Um, easily done, very quickly. So, you know what? No silver shortage out there for me. Sorry, I've gone on a bit of a rant and a rave there, but um, I do think that it's a load of bollocks. There is a plenty large amount of silver out there and uh, considering the amount of silver supply chain issues that there has been in the world, when the uh, silver, um, I can't remember what the, is it, is the Silver Institute brought, brought out their mining figures, it was only 7% down on last year. And considering the amount of uh, disruption in supply chains that there have been, um, you know, yeah, there's plenty out there for, for everybody. Um, so now I've, I've really gone off the rails there with some of the chat. So we'll just skip back down. We've got Roy Lagden in the chat. Hello, Roy. How are you, my friend? Hope everything's well with yourself. Um, hope you know, He says he loves Gothic crowns. Of course, you love Gothic crowns, mate. Everybody loves a Gothic crown. Uh, Bill Guerra says uh, YouTube doesn't know what bollocks are. Uh, no, I suppose they probably don't. But, um, you know, it, it, it does annoy me that people use that as a, uh, you know, they use the US Mint's email with a kind of misworded there um, as this indication of the world falling apart because there was, yeah, it just, yeah. But anyway, um, Hen I can't even read your name. Henchitarian says, hi, backyard bullion. It seems like the European Mint is a no-go now. Would you buy silver from the UK now? Well, there's two schools of thought on this, um, my friend. The European Mint is still a great place to buy from. Uh, the problem is not that they are not a good place to buy from. The problem is that they're not based in the UK, so you have to import it and you have to pay taxes on things. Um, I have had shipments through from them since um, since Brexit has o been over and we've had uh, to pay some import taxes and duties, but it's still worked out cheaper than some of the other dealers out there in the UK, uh, even with shipping. So, yeah, it is possible. It depends what you want to buy. It depends how you want to buy. Um, so I would still recommend them. They're a great company. It's just a shame that we can't do the big fat group orders anymore. Um, you know, unboxing £50,000 worth of silver on the table was wonderful, but at the same time, I'm not also that worried about um, not having it. Hey, look, we're over 100 likes now. How fantastic. This has been one of the busiest live streams that we've done over this last couple of weeks. So a massive thank you to everybody for joining in. I really enjoyed doing these, and uh, it's something I'm, I've been trying to uh, do more of over this last couple of um, weeks now, because we don't tend to have done very many live streams in the past. But it's nice to engage with you guys. It's nice to actually hear some of the feedback from you guys, not on only on you know gold and silver as as the market is, but also just you know on everything that we're all going through together in this world. Um, you know, it is a difficult world that we live in right now. Uh, silver prices going up and down, left, right, center. Premiums up, down, left, right, center. All of the weirdness going on in the world with social media and the uh, you know the the monkeys over on Reddit and everything as well. Um, yeah, really, really weird times, really weird times. And um, if you are like new to the channel, uh, and I'd say, you know, there's a lot of people who are new over this last week or two, we've done a, a few videos which have caused a, a bit of a stirring of the hornet's nest, I think, to say the least. I mean, let me just have a look at my YouTube studio right now and see uh, what we're at in terms of view counts. Yeah, I mean, look, we've done, so there's been basically three videos in this last week and a half, uh, May 23rd, so yeah, basically the last two weeks that we have done, which has really um, gone pretty you know, viral for what we do. So we've got, um, this is why I'm done with silver, 19,000 views, everybody should own a kilo of gold. A little bit of tongue in cheek there, I appreciate not everybody can own a kilo of gold, but that's 12,000 views. And then the big one, the big one, which was my video that I put out last week about the concerns that I have about the silver greater community and the reasons why people are going and that's 22,000 views so it's way way above what we would normally expect from our videos 
and um, and that's great. It's fantastic to have new people joining the channel. We've had nearly a thousand new members in the last, or a thousand new joining in the last month, and um, that's really exciting for me. Um, it's really great to have people in. So, you know, I, I, I like what I do. I love what I do, and, and I'm really keen to. I put out a community post the other day as well. I definitely kicked a hornet's nest. I, I start to get loads of really, really rude and visceral comments through uh, on YouTube and various places like that, and it was. It's difficult, isn't it? Because you, you make content and you put yourself out there on YouTube and then you get people calling you government shills, CIA psyops and all this bollocks. It's just, you know, it's just agenda driven. It's just hatred that people don't necessarily see. Um, and I'm not part of that. So whatever. Um, Roy is good. Roy said he is good. I'm glad to hear it, Roy. Long term support of our channel, Roy, and channel members uh, as well. If you guys haven't checked out our channel membership perks, by the way, um, then do please have a look because it supports the channel. Uh, you get first dibs on certain new products that we bring out. In fact, we did that earlier this month with the one ounce silver forum bars. Uh, and there are other products like these little one ounce bundles worth of these things here, which we've been sending out to uh, channel members as well. So go and check them out. There's no pressure if you want to do it. Great. If you don't, then that's fine too. Um, now I have gone off on a couple of different rapples here, so I apologize. I've missed quite a bit in the chat. Uh, if you guys have questions or anything that you want to ask, then let me know by using the at symbol going at Backyard Bullion. Or if you've enjoyed the stream and you want to share the love, you can feel free to put a super chat uh, and ask any questions that you want as well. We've just tipped over an hour. I'm actually going to go for a little longer today. We're going to go until the top of the hour. So another 15 minutes of this live stream and we can then finish off the day, for me anyway, with a nice little ramble with the dogs around the block. Uh, for those who are uh, in the know about my bad knee that I dislocated a couple of weeks ago, things are improving right nice and quick, which is good. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself, though, um, but I was cleared by the physio to do 20-minute walks on pavements, so basically not rough terrain, um, cycling on stationary bike, which we got for 20 minutes, and then swimming, swimming as much as, as I can do and I'm allowed. So um, I've been swimming every day for this last two weeks, which has been incredible. I love going swimming, especially in the hot weather of the summer. So, um, yeah, it's like beautiful, beautiful to be active again. So once we're done here at the top of the hour, I will be having a nice relaxing meander around the block with the doggos. And then I'll be sitting back, relaxing. And I think I might even treat myself to a nice little glass of wine um, when it's five o'clock. Let's maybe say five o'clock because then it's a bit more socially acceptable to have a glass of wine. Um, so Jay says that he is in Northern Ireland, which is mixed blessings for moving goods. Have you any legit avenues to use the Northern Ireland protocol to import precious metals VAT free? Can you leapfrog it in? So Jay, it's an interesting question uh, on that front. And I don't know enough about that whole era or era, that whole area, I beg your pardon, to, I think, comment responsibly about that. Um, for me, I very much don't ever want to skirt the rules and skirt laws. I made videos on this in the past. Um, if there is a legal method to do this, then fine. But I would imagine that it's going to be exceedingly complex and complicated. Um, and that might be worthwhile for other people. But for me, I'm just going to sit back and not worry about it, especially if you're running a business. If you're just a stacker, there can be arguments made that it's just less important. But if you're a business and you have to do reporting and you could be audited by HMRC every year, it's just not worth worrying about. It's just not worth doing. Absolutely shoot yourself in the foot if you get caught out doing those kind of things. Uh, Diane Ratchet says, my company is federally incorporated. I've been looking into that, but it is Canada. Um, yeah, again, like he says the same thing. It's so complex. Once you are an actual, um, you know, once you're an actual company or a registered business it's so much more onus to do things right and responsibly um you know it, it is literally the most important thing that you can do i don't ever want to be on the wrong side of hmrc and some people call me a coward for that so you should push things and push limits but no no i do it responsibly um otherwise what's the point i just can't be asked with all that uh Prolly says my lord byb did you buy one of the una and the lion bars i did my friend and in fact I think I've got it to hand. I do. So here you all go. Here, if you've been sitting around for an hour listening to me waffle on, you've got yourself a nice little treat on the hour and four minute mark. The Una and the Lion Bar. 
absolutely gorgeous. Really like this product. It's the only gold bar that I have and that I probably ever will have because um, bars, well, I say will have. I mean, if I win the lottery, I'm buying a gold bar. That is 100% sure. I'm buying a kilo gold bar if I win the lottery. Hells, yes. But I doubt I will ever actively go and buy a big old chunky gold bar. But this Una is wonderful. Look at the size. The profile of it is very difficult with this camera to get it to focus. But the profile of it is incredibly thin. So you can see so much of this one ounce of gold. And if you put it next to a coin, you can kind of see the difference in size profile. Really, really big. Um, absolutely love it. The design is electric. The design is wonderful. I'm curious as to whether they will do a Three Graces version, because this is, of course, commemorating the Una and the Lion coin, the uh, the one that obviously set the world on fire. Uh, and I would buy, actually, so having said that, I wouldn't buy any more gold bars. I would buy the Three Graces version of this if that comes out later this year. Um, we'll have to wait and see on that side of things. But yes, absolutely love this uh, particular bar. It's gorgeous. No, we're not going to take it out of its uh, OMP, the original mint packaging. I'm going to keep it in there as it is, I think, for um, probably its lifespan. I think it adds to it more than it would detract from it by taking it out. So, um, so Jay says he totally understands, hence the legit disclaimer. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a difficult one, Jay. Don't know enough about the whole subject to really comment on it. Uh, Prolly says, how wonderful that bar looks. Thank you for showing it, my 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 lord. I'm not your lord. I'm just a guy on YouTube who likes to talk about shiny things. Uh, it is absolutely wonderful, I agree. 100% beautiful, beautiful thing. And Roy Langdon likes it as well. He's gone, wow, 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 wow. Nice Una bar. Um, Owen May says, I would probably stack more gold, but it is hard to get over the fact that it is yellow. What have you got against yellow stuff? It's gorgeous. Look how beautiful this gold is. It is absolutely wonderful. I'm actually a real fan of the colour of gold. Um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Here, I've got the prime example. So we've got two different um, types of gold which are made with different alloys. So the one on the right is an old traditional sovereign, which is an alloy of 22 karat gold with silver. And then on the left, you have a modern sovereign, which is 22 carats of gold alloyed with copper. And you can see that there is a distinct coppery tinge or a slight rosy tinge to this particular gold coin. I am much more of a fan of this old school silvery look or this old school gold look of these sovereigns. Don't particularly like the modern sovereigns in that sense of them having this kind of rose tinted look. You can see it a little better when they're sort of sat out in the light there. Um, you know, it's either for me going to be the old school sovereigns like the, uh, you know, the, these ones here or the 90 percenters that have this gorgeous still gold look and feel to them or 999 gold. Pure gold is a beautiful colour. Definitely like that over this 22 karat modern rose stuff. It's just not quite as pretty by any stretch at all. Um, Georgia, uh, Georgina Evans says, hello, I hope everybody is OK. UK, I hope you're OK as well. Georgina, thank you for stopping by and saying hello. Um, Nick002 says, runaway inflation is setting up a perfect investment scenario for PMs. Yes and no. I've talked as well about uh, inflation being connected with interest rates and the potential for interest rates to go up to control inflation and then that will have a negative impact on the price of metals. So yes and no, my friend, I think is the answer, the honest answer to that. Um, C Scratchy says, colour doesn't matter as long as it's shiny. Uh, you can definitely say that the uh, the little half sovereign here that we have is a shiny one for sure. If we take the cap uh, cap shell off, you can see it is a very very pretty 2019 half sovereign. It is very very shiny indeed. So yeah, no, I agree. I do like shiny things. I mean that's what I bill myself as a guy who likes to sit on YouTube and talk about shiny things. It is absolutely wonderful. Roy Lagden says sovereigns are cool but his Achilles is young head sovereigns. Um, I think all of these are, I don't think any of them are Queen Victoria actually. No, well actually no, this 1900 one will be. Um, so yeah, that's the old veiled head Queen Victoria in her latter years. Uh, apparently Queen Victoria was very, very shy of putting her older self on these coins, which is why the younger portrait of her was used for quite so long, and it was only in the late 1890s, or early 1890s, that they changed it to that uh, that old head, even though by that time she was already quite an elderly monarch. So interesting little unknown fact there for all of you. Um, 
Michael W says, had my first coin gold bar lately, a dragon rectangular. These are gorgeous. Now I have to get the other years too. Gold can be an addiction, but I guess there are much worse addictions. There are indeed much worse addictions out there in the world for sure. Um, for me, I am very much a fan of um, the old school. I love just old school gold. Um, those rectangular dragon coin bars, I did feature one. Uh, we had a group order where somebody bought one, uh, but they never like sung to me like perhaps the Una and the Lion did. So, um, you know, in terms of getting them, not really for me, but they are, I will admit, very beautiful. Uh, Josh Garner says, did I buy the 2021 Eyes of the World silver coin? It was 0.666 ounce and had a snake eye on it on one side. Um, I have not got that. I've not heard of that actually either as well. So the short answer to that is no. Um, perhaps it's something we'll find in time, but um, yeah, not, not really in the know about that, I'm afraid. Roseanne asks, are these 24 karat gold? They are indeed. They are four nines gold for these wonderful, beautiful one ounce gold bars. Look at that pattern. It is gorgeous. It is very well designed, I have to say, from the Royal Mint. Not often that the Royal Mint just knocks one out of the park, but they've done it a number of times over this last couple of months. Um, C Scratchy says, Sovereign's looking... Ooh, Sovereign's looking one this weekend, hopefully. Yep, yeah, Sovereign's are a great thing to add to any stack over a long period of time. Um, you can get them at really decent prices as well. Like the comparison between a Sovereign and a quarter ounce gold. So we've got here a quarter ounce Queen's Beast uh, Greyhound and the Sovereign. Sovereign is a touch under a quarter of an ounce. It's 0.235 of an ounce. Of course, a uh, quarter ounce is 0.25, but the premium difference is massive. So this Sovereign you can buy easily at three, four percent over spot, depending on the condition. But these you're going to be paying 10, 15 percent over spot for. Um, you know, the, it, I've always been baffled by that. Why a quarter ounce gold coin in 999 form is such a high premium compared to a sovereign, uh, which is essentially the same fractional weight. But you know, it is what it is, and I'm a slave to this series, so I had to buy them, had to pay the premium on them. Uh, you know, that's part of the way that we go. Um, Jay says the old veiled head is his favourite uh, obverse in all of coin collecting. Interesting, my friend. I think for me, I always get confused with obverse and reverse. Obverse is the head side, isn't it? So I guess then technically this is not an obverse, but this side of the 50 pesos is by far and away my favorite side of any coin out there in the world. Jay, this is my bread and butter. If I had as much money in the world as I wanted, I would buy uh, a thousand of these and I'd sit in them like Scrooge McDuck. Oh, beautiful, beautiful coins. Just wonderful in their design, their look, their feel, their weight, everything about it just says to me, beautiful. And uh, we are now at six, six of them I've got in my stack and I want to get to 10. And I'll do the Backyard Bullion Blunderbust. Because so we've got Yankee Stacking, good friend of the channel. Yankee Stacking has got his Yankee Cannon of uh, American Eagles. And he's got his the Yankee Musket of Quarter Ounce Maple Leafs, I believe. So um, we're going to get the Backyard Bullion Blunderbust together at some point. Um, so five minutes to the top of the hour. We're going to start wrapping things up at four o'clock UK time. Because at five o'clock today, we actually have a really fun video going out all about this 50 pesos where we test it. Uh, we are going to put it under the microscope, so to speak, not technically a microscope, but we're going to put it under some calipers and on the trading standards approved very expensive scales, which I've got. I'm going to do a specific gravity test on it. So all of you wonderful people that have been sat here for an hour watching me ramble on at the top of the next hour, five o'clock UK time, we have another video for you to watch. It's a backyard bullion double header today with the live stream on a Friday. Um, so you can see me doing all of my tests on that coin uh, to really showcase what you can do at home on that and um, yeah, really just get to grips if you've got new coins that you want to test. It's not difficult to do. Um, C Scratchy asks, any advice on buying from the Silver Forum? So C Scratchy, I would say very much uh, if you are uh, buying from somebody, check their profile out, check their trading feedback out, see how much they've actually been selling rather than buying. Um, and if they've got good loads of feedback on there, you've not got a great deal to worry about, to be quite frank. I've not heard of any established sellers being any kind of dodgy at all. Uh, if they're a brand new seller, perhaps you could um, see if they'd be willing to uh, do some form of compromise, maybe half payment and then payment upon receipt if you've got an established profile yourself. Or if not, and they are completely brand new and you're really still concerned, 
um, just be polite. Just ask them. Just tell them and just say, you know, I'm, I'm perhaps concerned about um, this whole situation. Would you be prepared to use an established member as an intermediary? We offer that service. A few other people could perhaps step in as well if needed. Um, so lots of ways of being safe on the Silver Forum for trades and purchases. Um, so we're going to start thinking about wrapping up. And I'd like to put a last little reminder in on the stream for everybody to hit that thumbs up button. If you have joined in the last little bits, the last leg of our stream, it would be wonderful if we could get, let's call, let's see if we can get to 140 likes. That would be an incredible achievement. I'm not sure we can get quite there, but we're at 130 right now. So 10 of you out there, come on, there must be 10 of you out of 105 watching that haven't got those likes. 132, so come on, we must be able to get there. Just hit that like, it really does help what we do here on the channel. Um, it helps other YouTube channels when you watch their videos and you hit the thumbs up button, try and get in the habit of doing it. It's one of the best ways that you can support any channel out there. Leaving a comment on people's videos as well is a really good way of engaging with them. 137, come on, three more likes. Got 97 in the chat still. A few people leaving now that we're starting to wrap up. One more, 139 we're at. See if we can get that 140th thumbs up. 141, we're all over it. Can we get to 150? I, do you know what I feel like right now? I feel like that guy from, um, uh, what's it called? The bargain, no, not the bargain, the, the auction show where they do the... Uh, uh, Oh, I can't even think. The, you know, storage container. Storage wars, that's the one. A hum and a hum and a hum and a hum. We've got 141, 141. Oh, somebody put a little thumbs down to go down to 140. And we get another hub, a couple of hundred. And, uh, no, I can't even do it. But anyway, we'll stick. Oh, 144, three thumbs downs. People are putting those thumbs downs. Perhaps they don't like what I have to say. Or perhaps they don't like my storage wars impression. But a hum and a hum and a hum and a hum and a 145. A hum and a hum and a 147. Can we get 150? Go on, 150 and I'll stop. I'm sure a lot of you want me to just shut up and go away right now. Oh, look, those two people that put those thumbs downs have gone and put them on thumbs ups now. 149, come on, winning bid of 150. Let's see. Let's get it in. 150, and we're 151. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody. I've had an absolute blast today doing this um, live stream. As I've said throughout the live stream, we're going to do um, a whole bunch of live streams in the near future. We're going to try and do them once a week. Uh, it's actually worked out really well on a Friday uh, afternoon. This has been the most popular live stream we've done in the last couple of weeks. Some previous ones we've had like a culmination of like 70 viewers. This one we had about 125 people at the peak. Um, and we're still going hum and hum and hum and 154, 154. Any, gun, any, any more 154, any more likes? Well, let's see if we get 160 before we finish. Uh, but, you know, it's been a great one. I've really enjoyed doing this. Thank you all for watching. Uh, you know, I really, really enjoy talking with you guys, uh, hanging out, just chilling, relaxing, showing off. Some of my bits of gold and silver. Um, last comment I've just seen before I was about to really wrap up and end it was Gordon uh, Gachret saying, where can I buy the 40 pesos? Mate, they're 50. There's a big 50. He's realized his mistake. I'll put it there as close as I can. 50 pesos. If you want to find out more about it, my friend, five o'clock today, big video going out showing it and all the tests on it. But otherwise, that is it from me. A big thank you to all for watching. Uh, just have a fantastic week ahead and a weekend as well. Stay safe. We'll see you on the next one. See you next week for the next live stream. Have a fantastic weekend.